Hello and welcome to our Facebook Live. So excited to be here today. I'm your host, Jennifer Tinklenberg, and today I'm here with Bart and Nancy Westcott, who are our longest day co-chairs. So Nancy and Bart, how are you guys doing today? We're doing great. Okay. So happy to be talking to you, Jenny. This is exciting. It is. I'm so glad to talk to you too. It's always good to see a friendly face. Um, or friendly faces, since there's two of you. Uh, so let's get right into it. June, it's an exciting month. We've got a lot of great stuff coming up here. So June is specifically about brain health. Can you tell us what is so important about the month of June? Yes, well, it absolutely is significant because it's Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month. And it really is raising the visibility around Alzheimer's and all other dementia and allowing us to recognize the perseverance of everybody that is, is living with Alzheimer's, their caregivers, the frontline workers that are working with our vulnerable community, and all those that are fighting to end Alzheimer's. So it's really fitting that it's in the month of June because June has the longest days of the year. It has a summer solstice on June 20th. And this is, allows us, this brain, uh, Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month allows us to shine light on, on the whole arena and also emphasize brain health. And in fact, the association has great resources related to that. There's a, a piece that you can see on our website that, that talks about the 10 ways to love your brain. And there's a whole series in the month of June that focuses on, on brain health that you can find at the uh, Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month 2020 section of our website. Perfect. So for those of you just joining us, I'm here with Bart and Nancy Westcott, who are our co-chairs for the longest day. And we're talking about Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month, which it goes the entire month of June. Um, for a, the quick link um, to get to the generic page for Alzheimer's and Brain Awareness Month is alz.org slash abam. And I think we have an even more interesting local link that is bit, bit.ly slash bit.ly slash abam slash 2020. Um, and you can find a lot of great things and you can show us your purple and tell us your story. And so we've got a lot of great stuff there. So there's, you, you mentioned the summer solstice a couple of times. Um, what is, I, so I think that has to do with the longest day. Uh, can you tell me a bit about, um, more about that and how people are adapting due to having to shelter in place? Sure, so the longest day is the, is the Alzheimer's Association's second signature fundraising event after the walk. And it's basically an opportunity to do what you love for someone you love. So people have, have put all kinds of different activities, tr transformed all kinds of different activities into fundraisers. Um, a couple of important dates, first of all, of course, there is the solstice, which is the 20th, week from Saturday. Uh, and a lot of events sort of surround the solstice, but they're not, but it's not, TLD events are not anchored to the solstice. There's stuff happening throughout the season. And it's not too late to register. The, uh, you can register a team up until July 31st. And the fundraising for this season actually lasts through August 31st. So there's still plenty of time to do a TLD event. Um, so a lot of, because of what's been happening in, in our world in the last several months, a lot of the events that previously would have been sort of live gatherings have become online or virtual gatherings and people have shown incredible creativity in, in converting their events to online events. There's all kinds of different things. There's a, there's a Nigerian artist named Kunle Adewale, who's, who's you may have already read about on, on uh, some of the Alzheimer's publications. He's a, a Nigerian artist who's on a fellowship here uh, with the uh, Global Brain Health Initiative. And he was going to do an art exhibit, an art show and, and sale uh, and an pre educational presentation up in the city at, at UCSF Medical Center. But that's going to be online now. It's going to be on the 19th of June. It's, it's really pretty amazing. He's going to have an educational forum. And also a, he has his 
beautiful 3D art gallery. Mm -hmm. And the art's going to be on sale for a month after that event. So that's on June 19th. It's free. You can get tickets on eBike. Um, one of the things that one of the ideas that recently has been hatched by our, our staff partners, which is just terrific, is called Miles for Memories. And it's basically this great way to run, hike, bike, and use that as a fundraiser. So, you know, I'm going to run 100 miles in the month of June or the month of July, and please pledge, you know, a dollar a mile or five dollars a mile. Um, so, and, and, and if you register and, be, and set up a Miles for Memory team, you get access to a weekly uh, email from a woman whose name I can't, I think it's Sarah Lavender Smith, mm -hmm. who's a renowned ultra marathoner. And she's going to be sending tips on training, nutrition, uh, sort of mental toughness, you know, all the things that you need if you're going to go out there and do the miles. Mm -hmm. So check that out. Uh, one of our committee, longest day committee members, Alexis, is going to do a, um, a Mediterranean cooking class Ooh. on June 28th. And she'll send you the, if you make a donation, she'll send you a list of the ingredients. So if you want to, you can cook along with the, 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 the class, or you can just take notes and, you know, cook later. So, um, Oh, and one, one exciting new thing, the first, a first this year is we have a couple of live streamers who are going to be raising funds for, for or funds and awareness for the longest day. There's a young man who's the world champion dance, dance revolution player, and he's going to be live streaming on the solstice. Mm -hmm. And then there's another, another guy who goes by the name of Loverfella, and he is a, he's a Minecraft champ okay. and he's got something like a million five followers around the world and he's going to have like a five-day period where he'll be you know doing his usual thing but promoting alzheimer's awareness and you know hopefully raising funds for the for the cause That's and great. we just want to make one one quick last thing a, a shout out to one of our great fundraisers Roz Mendens, who had a uh a lobster feed at her venue that's called Great Highway in San Carlos and just managed to get that in right of February, right before right. we all moved into a different world. <laughs> she, she was fantastic and raised a lot of money, but I did want to emphasize that I think of this as strength in numbers, you know, yeah. uh, any size uh, support for the longest day is terrific, you know, and if we have a whole lot of people, even doing a little bit, it, it adds up to a big deal. Yeah. So. I agree. No, what I love about the miles for memory thing is that, so I know that a lot of like marathons have been canceled. And so if you raise, I think it was $250, you get a medal. So yeah. it's kind of like making up for what you're not getting by participating in an actual marathon. And I think that's a really neat thing. Yeah, you bet. Well, anybody can register. It's open. It's not too late. And the uh, registration site is alz.org slash TLD. And wear your purple. <laughs> Perfect. I love how decked out you guys are in Longest Day stuff, too. I've got the, you've got the flags and, you know, your little, um, your framed picture back there is so great. I love it. <laughs> great. That's fantastic. Um, oh, one other neat thing I heard about with the longest day is somebody is going to be melting a block of ice. Did you guys hear about that? Yeah. I thought that was such a neat, unique idea. And everyone, well, oh, go ahead. What's even greater, Jenny, is that now it's become a competition between Northern Nevada, which is part of our chapter, because our chapter is Northern California and Northern Nevada, and Southern Nevada. So there's going to be an ice block in Carson City, Nevada in the north and an ice block in Las Vegas. So people can guess how long it's going to take for each of those ice blocks to melt and there will be prizes awarded. Oh, I this love it. I didn't now. realize that it had expanded into a competition. That's so fantastic. <laughs> it's wonderful. 
Well, that's great. So once again, that's alz.org slash TLD. If you'd like to sign up, you can find that ice block challenge on there too, I believe, as well as Miles for Memories, um, all sorts of different options on um, alz.org slash TLD um, or alz.org slash the longest day. Um, so Nancy, you're on the board of directors. Um, oh wait, let me back up real quick. Just for those who are just joining us, this is Nancy and Bart Westcott. They are our co-chairs for the longest day. And Nancy also happens to be on our board of directors. Can you tell us how um, the Alzheimer's Association has been using, like are still supporting families and staying safe, but like keeping in line with public health restrictions? Absolutely. Well, I have been so impressed with the leadership of the association at the national and at the chapter level, because the moment things changed in our world, the organization moved rapidly to working from homes, doing everything remotely, moving the educational programs, the forums, the support groups, all to either the phone or the web. And in fact, I mean, there was an Alzheimer's uh, Chinese forum that took place uh, several weeks ago uh, in Mandarin that was, quickly converted uh, to a, re, uh, a um, digital event. And it, because of it, all of a sudden, geography sort of dropped out and people from across the United States as well as international participants could get involved. So that continues on. Uh, in fact, if someone goes to our website and looks at community resources, the number of programs that are available the support groups for caregivers and uh, early stage um, individuals living with Alzheimer's. They're all there. And uh, you know, a good example is that there's a uh, one on June 15th for know the 10 signs of Alzheimer's. There's another one about COVID-19 and caregiving that's on June 19th. So that's all there. Plus the 24 seven helpline continues to be functional. Uh, it's been open this entire time, regardless of when people need help, it's there for, for them. Perfect. Yeah, no, the, for those of us who are trying to get to the education classes and support groups, you can find those at alz.org slash NorCal slash events, and it will list off all of our support groups or education classes or conferences, anything you might need to get in, in touch with us. Um, or more educated. And then, as you mentioned, the helpline, um, our number for that is 800-272-3900. And we're available 24 seven, um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we've multiple languages too, I believe. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah. Well, now it is time for our advocacy break. So we'll be right back with you guys in a few moments and we'll jump over to Jared from our advocacy team. Hi, Jared, how are you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing great. How is it up at the Capitol? <laughs> uh, warm and active. <laughs> <laughs> so you're new to the association. Can you tell us a bit about who you are and what you do here for us? Yeah, sure. So um, again, my name is Jared Geruso. I'm the Government Affairs, uh, California Government Affairs Director. I started in September of last year, 2019. And what a 10 years it's been. Um, so, um, you know, prior to joining the association, I worked for four years at the Cal State Student Association doing um, a similar role as a government affairs um, director for, for the association, advancing um, affordability um, um, concerns for college students here in California, as well as ensuring educational equity um, for, for um, students uh, attending the CSU. I'm originally from the Bay Area, um, uh, born and raised, um, born in Berkeley, raised on the peninsula. And, attended SF State for my undergrad. And so I've been, you know, purple through and through for a very long time now. <laughs> um, and then with the association, my role is to help lead our state advocacy um, here in Sacramento. So each, um, e uh, the California is represented by five chapters, um, obviously the Northern California chapter, um, and then uh, a number of chapters um, for Southern California. Um, each, each chapter has a policy team and they work to help coordinate both our federal and state advocacy. Um, but it's my role to help um, um, communicate on behalf of the association in our state capital, um, identify policy opportunities and budget opportunities, um, and then work with everybody on our staff as well as our volunteers to help um, advance the issues that we care about. 
Great. So I know we had a whole bunch of stuff that we were working on before COVID happened, and now everything has changed and you have all sorts of new priorities and our advocates have been super busy. So could you tell everyone what's going on in a federal level for the Alzheimer's Association? Yeah, so there is um, a lot going on. And if you're on uh, this uh, uh, meeting town hall, um, I'm, I'm sure that you're probably familiar with some of them, but I'll go over uh, each one uh, very briefly. Um, so first is our is our COVID um, um, response work. Um, we have a package of three items that we're hoping can be advanced into whatever um, fourth package. We're on to our fourth potential package of a, a federal response for COVID-19. And um, in that um, advocacy for the association, we're trying to advance um, elder justice, helping train um, people primarily in the criminal justice um, space, um, help provide training for them so that they're familiar with the issues that are facing people with dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, in, uh, improving hope, which some of you may be familiar with, helps to um, ensure that the HOPE Act, which was passed in 2009, um, actually serves individuals and that clinici cl clinicians are actually um, providing that care coordination that um, was a part of the uh, HOPE Act. And then also um, um, increasing support for nonprofits. Um, there was initially some support for nonprofits, um, but it didn't um, qualify for associations that are as large as the Alzheimer's Association. So you know, each one of these is a standalone item, but the hope of our, of our team in DC is that our advocacy can encourage uh, members to want to have any of these items or all of these items in, in a COVID-19 package. Additionally uh, to that, we have our appropriations work, which seeks to increase the amount of NIH funding that goes towards Alzheimer's research. And so we're hoping for $354 million in increase to the NIH budget, as well as $20 million to fund um, the BOLD Act, um, which is um, an act that passed um, previously and needs um, funding at the federal level to ensure that it happens. And then lastly, our, um, our federal work includes recommendations for long-term care facilities. Obviously, we all know um, the impacts that have happened related to COVID-19 for long-term care in California. Um, half of the deaths, unfortunately, um, related to COVID-19 have happened in congregate living communities. And so the association put together a list of four recommendations. Um, one is um, baseline, universal baseline testing um, and ongoing testing in, in long-term care facilities. In California, this is now a requirement for skilled nursing facilities and is recommended for um, uh, residential care facilities. Um, they want additional reporting and, and, and uh, transparency and reporting. Um, in California, that is happening somewhat, um, but could be improved. Um, surge activation so that when there is an outbreak of COVID-19 that there is a clear plan for those communities and the way that the state and federal government will work with them and then increase uh, personal protective equipment for, for everybody um, there. Um, and so those are those are some of our federal uh, some of our federal uh, asks. One this. or two, no big <laughs> deal. <laughs> So you advocates uh, more locally, specifically in California, what are what are they up to right now? Yeah, so so in our state government, we have a lot going on right now. The legislature has reconvened after being uh, um, in recess for two uh, approximately two months related to COVID-19. And um, we, uh, the Alzheimer's Association, really have two priorities here in um, California. One is um, a bill that we were able to um, get um, what's called gutted and amended, which means that we take a policy out of a former bill and put a new policy in. Um, this bill, AB 20, uh, 2047 by Assemblymember Aguilar Curry has moved through the assembly and is now in the Senate. So we're seeing progress there, which is great. It requires counties to update their emergency plans um, to account for the unique challenges that individuals with Alzheimer's and, and dementia face. I know we've heard so many stories of, of issues that people have had in residential care facilities, living independently, seeking health care, um, and, and we want to make sure that the counties are prepared for that. Um, so that bill is moving through. And then in addition to that, unfortunately, because of COVID-19, there have been major impacts to um, the state and national economy. And what that means in California is a $54 billion deficit. Um, and that deficit means that the state proposal, the governor's proposal, proposal initially proposed to cut an, um, a number of 
programs that we care very deeply about. Um, the community-based adult services program, the multi-purpose senior services program were both slated to be eliminated, as well as reductions to in-home supportive services um, and caregiver res uh, resources. So we are working to advocate against those cuts. We have been fortunate so far. Our legislature, as a part of the budget making process, has um, tentatively approved a budget that rejects those cuts. So we're in um, a, a good position um, in an unfortunate time right now. And now our work has been focused on the governor agreeing to that, um, that plan. Nice. Uh, so it sounds like you guys really have your work cut out for you right now. <laughs> So Nevada is also part of our chapter, um, and I believe, and I know this isn't your expertise, like this isn't your state, so, but I believe they're out of session, isn't that correct? Yeah, so they have a biennial um, legislature and budgeting process, um, which happens every odd year. So right now, um, in 2020, they are um, on, on their regular break. Um, I think the, the, the legislature or the governor can call a special session, but they have not yet done that. Um, and that they'd be reconvened in, in 2021. Perfect. Well, so what, um, how do you become an advocate? If it sounds like you could use some help, what, yeah, what, we, what can we do? <laughs> use, uh, we could use any and all help that people are willing to, um, to give. And so um, in, in California, uh, in our chapter, we have um, a, a great policy team uh, led by Susan DeMorris and with, uh, in addition to her, Jessica Rothar, both, uh, both of them can help coordinate any of our efforts. I know that the chapter is very large and so the way that we segmented is regionally. So if people are interested, um, they can reach out to um, anyone of uh, either Susan, Jessica or myself um, or really anybody on staff to be connected to the right person. Um, in addition to that, we do have an active, you know, right now, and as I mentioned in our, state ab in our state advocacy, we have an active action item, if you haven't already seen it, which sends messages and tweets to the governor. Um, and so if folks aren't, haven't received a, a text right uh, at, at this point or haven't done that yet, um, they can text no cuts, one word, um, to um, 52886 um, and that will enable them to be entered into our phone to action system so they can message the governor and keep up to date with any of our uh, upcoming advocacy items. So um, those would be the things that um, we could ask for folks. And, and again, you know, if, if, if people are comfortable um, posting and that's it, then that's great. If they're comfortable sending an email and that's it, that's great too. If they want to do a little bit more and they want to call an office, we'll prepare them for, for that as well. It's just um, anything that people are willing to do right now to advance some of these things, we'd be, we'd be happy um, to receive that. Right. And it sounds like a lot of those things are, can easily be done, be done from home, which is nice yes. during this time. Yes, so I think can. you can find more information about just, even if you don't live in California, you can find information about advocacy at alz.org slash advocate. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's even a way to pick your state and find out ways to volunteer there too. So I think that's, that's important. Yep. All right, Jared. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us. We really appreciate it. Have a great, have a good one. Um, and we will get back to Nancy and Bart who have a little bit more information for us about volunteering in general um, and a couple other uh, things. So, oh, there they are. Hi, they Nancy. Are. Welcome back. <laughs> so um, thank you for coming back. I really appreciate it. Um, so you guys have been volunteering with the Alzheimer's Association for several years. So um, why did you decide to get involved with us? And you know, what is it like being a volunteer? Oh, great. Well, I guess it started out with me. I attended a, an educational luncheon. It was a Reason to Hope luncheon a number of years ago, I think maybe 15 years ago. Uh, and really, when I went into that lunch, I did not know much at all about Alzheimer's. I knew it was you know, out there. But I frankly did not know it was a form of dementia. I did not know the impact on individuals and their families. Uh, I didn't realize there was no cure, that there was no way to slow the progression. And so I was convinced in that one hour lunch to start to donate. And I came back home and told Bart what I'd done, he pledged for a multi-year period. <laughs> but he was, he was right behind me because we could see it's significant. 
And then it was only a matter of a couple of years where our brother-in-law, uh, Bart's sister's wife, was diagnosed with younger onset Alzheimer's at age 60. And Ernie lived with it for about 10 years, but he passed away two years ago this month, actually on June 20th, the summer solstice. Yeah. Um, and he was just 70 years old. So that really prompted me to say, you know, I really want to help more, uh, do more. And I started to volunteer at that time. Bart's been such a terrific support and now partner. Uh, and it's been really fabulous to be co-chairing together uh, the longest day. So we both uh, jumped in with both feet. So it's been a wonderful experience uh, to me uh, personally, so fulfilling, uh, so rewarding. Um, I really feel that the association, because we're focused on a full mission, everything from research all the way over to care and support, it's where we feel we can put our energies. And the people we've worked with have just been phenomenal, including good people like you, you know, everybody in the staff, uh, all the volunteers have really been fabulous. Great. So what advice could you offer someone who's on the fence about whether or not they actually would like to become a volunteer? Well, I would say do it. <laughs> um, it's been it's been great. I mean, I, I think the Alzheimer's Association is is one of the most professional organizations that I've ever come in contact with. Um, everybody in the staff is just, committed, uh, capable, and supportive. And the association has a lot of resources. They want their volunteers to, to be effective and to you know, have a good experience. Uh, so they just have a lot of resources, training, um, I don't know, all, lots of online resources. So you know, you're not just sort of like, okay, thrown into the, into the deep end. It's like, we want you to be able to have a good experience and have, have an impact. Um, like I said, staff has just been really supportive. The level of appreciation for volunteers mm -hmm. is just always there from, from Harry Johns all the way down. Harry's the CEO. Um, and also the, there's lots of things you can do as a volunteer. I mean, a big part of it, of course, is the fundraising, the walk, the TLD. Um, but there's, you know, we've met caregiver supporters who are volunteers and I just, to sort of go along with what Jared was just talking about, we've really found it rewarding to get involved in the advocacy. We've been out to Sacramento a couple of times on the advocacy day and also back to DC once. And it's really interesting. And it's, like I said, it's really rewarding. So when we, when we are opened up and we can do that kind of thing again, in the meantime, let's let's email, tweet, and text, and do all those things. So, right, yeah. There's a lot of virtual committees still happening, especially for walk in the longest day. So that's really great. If you're interested in becoming a volunteer with us, you can go to alz.org/norcal/volunteer, and we have all sorts of opportunities available for anyone who's interested. Um, for many, many ages. So um, we hope you we hope you'll be a part um, of our organization. So the last topic I want to touch on is, of course, walk to end Alzheimer's. Um, I've got some lovely stuff behind me from um, un from past walks. Uh, so what can you tell us about what's going on with the uh, walk to end Alzheimer's this year? Yes, well, I, it's certainly a brave new world for all of us, and. Uh, our uh, volunteer planning committees are sorting out just how can we make the best experience possible for all 18 walks that we have in Northern California and Northern Nevada. So that is progressing really well. I'm convinced that we are gonna have a ton of fun in the fall related to walk. Uh, it might look a little different, but that's okay. I mean, I think creativity uh, is inspiring us to do new things. And if it works out that way versus a more traditional walk, that's fine because it'll still be a fabulous experience and we're raising awareness and funding for an important cause. Uh, so uh, certainly I think the best way to kind of keep up with what's happening in walk is to register. Uh, you can register and we keep talking about alz.org slash something or other. And in this case, it's slash walk. 
uh, but you absolutely can register. And then for the walk closest to you, uh, you will be getting uh, communications about what the plan is. So that right. I know it's a good one. Yeah, I know they've got some exciting stuff coming up, I'm sure. And I know that they're working really hard to come up with some new stuff. Um, I think the key thing people can do right now is just to download the app and then also to register because that's where it, all the information is going to be. So if you missed it, it was alz.org slash walk and you can register for the closest walk to you. And as Nancy said, there are 18 in our chapter. So I'm sure that there is one pretty close to where you live. All right. Well, I think that's all we have for you, us today. It's been so exciting talking about walk and advocacy and volunteering and the longest day, which is on June 20th. So thank you so much for participating with us today. And I will, well, hopefully I'll see all of you next time. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Thanks so much, Jenny. Thanks. Bye. Bye.